So while those ears are drying, I can work on another area of the paint. So I'm going to work on the eyes a little bit and I'll zoom in a little so that you can see what the heck I'm doing. And I'm just going to scrub. You can use an eraser, you can use your hand to get the, to get the frisket off. And there we have a, um, we have eyes with out the frisket. So I'm just going to work on shaping these. Um, you really want to look very closely at your eyes, of course, they're really the heart and soul of the look of the animal. So you want to get them as close to realistic as possible. Quite tricky, but Let's start here. And I am using completely dry brush right now because I just feel like I need to get the shape right here. And it's good to, uh, one way to um, paint what you see instead of what you think you see is to look at shapes instead of the eyes. See like in the painting there's kind of a triangle of light here. Whereas my eye might want to make his eye round, there's actually a triangle of, of light. And his eye kind of looks like a triangle. So like it's like this edge is straight, which is not what you would expect. So that's straight. And this comes up really high. And then this side is very slanted down to here. And I'll probably go back in and scrub some of that out because it's just something's not right and that's okay. But I'm going to let that dry for a minute and I'm going to go back over to my other eye. And just kind of darken and smudge all this together because if you look at the picture it's all very um kind of smudgy together <clears throat> that's looking a little better but I'm still gonna work on this eye in fact I'm gonna do it right now I'm gonna completely clean out this little brush Scrub out. See, that's the great thing about this black is you can just kind of scrub it out very gently. It doesn't take a lot with this black. Some colors it does, but not with this one. And I'm going to scrub this out right here. I'm going to move his whole pupil. <laughs> I get it to where I feel like it should be. Just kind of reshaping the eye. You know, my mind wants to say this eye is round, but actually it's kind of like a triangle, so I'm kind of str my brain is like <laughs> exploding. It's like, what are you trying to do here? I don't get it. <laughs> So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and nudge it around a little bit more. And that's going to make him smile a little bit more. Oops, that's a little too dark, isn't it? But that's okay. Just go back over it with some water. my ultramarine and a little bit of black in there because I don't want it too blue. I want more of a gray. I'll 
I'll go back in too and scrub this out because I want to capture a smile. Okay, so going to continue working on this eye. It's totally bugging me. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm just going to make sure I have some points correct. So this point is directly under and a little to the right of this point. So I'm looking at the two points on my original picture and I have these two points right. Okay, so I'm going to scrub a little bit more and get this a little bit higher. And not like this. So I'm going to scrub this. See, I'm just lightly going over it. Blot. Lightly going over it. And you don't want to rework something too much because then it'll start looking bad. So now I'm going to go back in and put the new edge of the eye in. Another good secret is when in doubt just kind of paint over everything and make it all soft and <laughs> that can really help too. So I think I'm gonna put another layer of pink and blue on his tongue just to kind of darken his tongue up a little. That'll help tie him to the background, which is something you want to do. And I'm just going to go in and get a little bit of ultramarine blue and just drop that in real loose. And I'm going to get some manganese too. That's more of a sky color, and that's what I used up here. Um, this in, work it on in to this side of his face, and just take it right up through his ear, which all has um, a cool color to it. You see I'm scrubbing right over his coat. That's attaching him to the background. I can always go back and define it more if I want to, but for now, I want to kind of work on attaching him to the background. Then I blotted this out because this is catching the sun a little bit. And um, since I'm at it with this cool, I'm gonna go over this part of his coat too, it's kind of cooler. So I'm going to work a little bit on refining these whiskers and these little um, white areas that the masking helped me save, but now I need to refine them. So I'm just going to take a fairly fine brush. This is a size 2. This is one of my Escoda brushes with really nice Kalinsky natural hair. And I like these brushes because one, they hold a lot of water, and two, they have a really good point on them, so you can get a very nice little tiny detail with them. So I'm just gonna load my brush up with a bit of naphthol red. 
and ultramarine blue and paint around these whiskers and I'll probably have to go in a few times and really refine ultramarine blue because this area in here is pretty dark. lightly scrub over all those whiskers in this area because if you look at the picture they don't really show anyway and I'm just going to scrub right over those edges and I'll let that dry in the meantime I'm going to go down in here and put in some little details are his metal rings on his collar and for the most part they're pretty dark anyway just there's a little bit of shine on them his teeth a little bit more too at this point I think. Won't take too much. But just want to make sure that I've got it as accurate as possible. I'll go back in later and kind of scrumble over all this to kind of soften the edges. Because I don't want his teeth to pop out too much. I don't want them to be the center of focus, so I want to keep everything really soft so the eye is not drawn too much to this area. And wherever there's black and white, the eye is going to want to go there. So, I want to be careful with that. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to refine his eyes too. Being real careful here. feel of the personality of the dog and the eye is one of the biggest contributors to how the personality of the dog comes through. So you want to be as careful as possible here. That looks really nice I think. Alright, I am going to very lightly moisten this whole area and go and put some whisker dots. I don't know what the, they're officially called. You know those little dots where the whiskers grow in? They always mix for such cute little personality. Kind of like freckles, but I don't know if they have an official name or not. I'll call them whisker dots. So you want to keep the whisker dots soft because usually you just want to hint at them and of course you can always go back in and soften them up which I probably will
because this is already drying a little bit and it's drying more than I would have wanted it to. Definitely go in and soften these edges that I'm creating right here. Just blotting a little bit just to make sure I have the kind of control that I want. work on refining the fur a little bit now and need to find my fur brush I really love to use this fur brush and um, if you go on my blog which is rachelstudio.blogspot.com there's um, a list of supplies and I think I have a link for this it's not an expensive brush, but it just has extended little bristles, and I like to use it for fur. So I'm just going to moisten the areas I want to work, and I'm just going to feel this with my hand to see how wet it all got. Um, I don't want it too wet because then the fur strokes will just merge and blend out and won't really hold up. So I'm just going to go in, get some burnt sienna, and as you can see, I'm scrubbing this pretty hard so that I can get a lot of paint in my brush and I'm using the dry paint well. And then I'm gonna go over here and scrub in my black, test it out a little bit. I really want my brush nice and thick, full. I want my brush full of nice, thick paint so that this brush strokes will hold up on the somewhat moist paper. And you see that's exactly what I'm getting. They're soft, but yet they are holding the shape of the brush. Just enough to hold that fur shape. But not so much that they don't look soft and they kind of look too harsh. And right here it's getting a little dry so now I'm going to go in with a little bit of a wet brush just with water and just kind of re-moisten these areas and that'll make some of it blend and some of it will hold its shape, which is what I want. As I paint, I kind of rotate my brush a little bit to get different shapes because if you get all the same shape, it just looks like a bunch of literally paintbrush dabs. And you want the eye to read this as black fur, not, oh, there's a bunch of paintbrush dabs. So if you work your brush while you're painting, I'm just going in and getting some pure black now, um, as this area has a lot of black fur. Um, so you rotate your brush a little bit as you paint. You can use the side, you can use it flat, you can use it a bit on a diagonal with the fur just to kind of 
change it up and um, then it won't look so paintbrushy. Sometimes you might want it to, but this is a pretty realistic style painting that I'm doing. I just want it to read fur, not paintbrush. <laughs> so I'm dabbing it in, rotating my brush a little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water for this area. And uh, that'll read fur real nicely. Go back and get some burnt sienna and black combination. This area of his coat is a little bit lighter. And I'm just gonna go in and just hint at that. Now, that's a little too harsh for me, so again, I'm going in with completely pure water. Going back over this, softening it up. using the very edge of my brush to just denote some of this very subtle fur through here. This is kind of the final detail work when you're going in and putting in these last little bits of fur. So I'm going to go back in and soften that. 